everybody, I'm Maggie Hill, and welcome back to Talk Techie, where we discuss how science, technology, engineering, and math are used in the real world every day in surprising ways. Today, we're gonna learn how to bottle up energy and save some for later. Well, sort of. Research scientist Alex Papandrew is here to explain. He's going to teach us how we use chemistry to store energy and batteries to create a more sustainable future. Alex, over to you. Let's talk about energy. The energy industry is turning to cleaner sources of energy, like wind and solar, to make the future more sustainable. But what happens if the wind isn't blowing or the sun isn't out? How will we power our communities then? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a way to store that energy and use it when we needed it? That's where batteries come in. Scientists are developing huge energy storage systems called redox flow batteries that can be used to store renewable energy for a very long time. So how do these redox flow batteries work? When a windmill turns, the mechanical energy of the blades turning gets converted to electricity. That electricity then gets converted in the battery into chemical energy. And that chemical energy is stored in two very special sets of molecules. The movement of that electrical charge inside the battery, where it's transferred from one chemical to the other, is something that we call redox. One of the chemicals loses its electron, or is oxidized, and the other chemical accepts that electron, or is reduced. We mash those words together to make one abbreviated term, redox. As soon as a battery is connected to an external power supply or voltage like you have in your home, the redox process begins. Voltage is a form of potential energy. That potential energy can then be converted back to electrical energy in what's called a cell of the battery, where the two electrolytes come together, separated from each other by what's called a membrane. Each cell has a voltage of around two volts, but we can stack those cells together to develop a larger and larger voltage as more and more cells are stacked. Those cells are in series, and we know that cells in series have voltages that add. So the more cells that we add gives us a linear increase in the voltage of the battery. It's simple to show that voltages in series add, and in fact, I'll show you right now. What I've got is a voltmeter and three AA batteries. So let's take a look at this. If I measure the voltage of one of these batteries, I get about 1.6 volts. Let's take a second and move it head to tail with the first by putting the batteries in series. Now, if I measure the voltage of both batteries in series, I get 3.2 volts. All right, maybe you're not convinced. Let's take a third and put that head to tail with the other two and measure the voltage of the entire stack. If I do that, I get, you guessed it, 4.8 volts. Now we saw from the demonstration that when we stacked three AA batteries in series, we got triple the voltage, and that means triple the power. But we also tripled the size of the battery, which tripled the amount of energy that we can store. Now, the unique thing about a redox flow battery is that that relationship doesn't necessarily hold. Think about the phone in your pocket and the battery that's in there. The batteries that we're building to store this renewable energy are a million, maybe even 10 million times the size of your phone battery. In a flow battery, the energy storage medium is a chemical that's dissolved in a liquid called an electrolyte. And those electrolytes can be stored in large tanks. Our electrolyte is water-based, which means that it's clean, safe, and affordable. That makes flow batteries the perfect solution for storing energy from wind and solar resources. And in the case of a flow battery, bigger really is better. The larger the tank, the more energy that can be stored, and the more electricity that can be produced. Here at Lockheed Martin, we're working on a redox flow battery of our own called Gridstar Flow to make long duration energy storage more available. In the future, communities will be able to access renewable energy and renewable energy storage to reduce consumption of finite natural resources and production of harmful pollution, leading to a brighter, more sustainable future for our global community. Well, I hope you're all feeling energized after that one. Thank you so much for talking techie with us today, Alex. If you wanna join in on the conversation, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. 
and check out LockheedMartin.com STEM for more resources. I'm Maggie Hill, and I'll see you next time. Bye.